All right, YouTube, so what I'm doing today is I'm gonna remove this sink and replace it with a new sink and faucet. I wanted something that I could replace this with, but without having to cut an opening in the granite or mess with the opening in the granite. So I've got a sink that's gonna fit on top of the granite, cover the existing hole, but also give us a new and modern look here in the bathroom. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I've already checked. I actually did my wife's sink already, so I kind of knew the process before going into this. But this sink is not secured on the bottom. Your sink might be if you're going to try this. So make sure you get underneath the cabinet, take a look, make sure there aren't any fasteners there. But this one is actually just caulked in place. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take a razor and start cutting the caulking out. And I'm gonna be careful to make sure I'm going so I'm not driving the razor blade into the granite. I'm just gonna work on trying to cut some of the caulking back that's kind of around the edge. So again, I'm being careful not to, and you may, it may be a good idea actually put a little bit of tape on this in case you accidentally scrape so you're not scratching your granite. The sink that I bought would be big enough to cover this anyways, even if I did, but just in case, I wanna to try to preserve my granite as much as I can. So now I'm just going to kind of wipe some of this, get it out of the way. Just kind of clean this up a bit. So now that I have that a little bit cleaned up, I'm going to take just some alcohol that I've gotten um, from the local store, just a little bit of alcohol. Get that on a cotton ball here. I'm gonna saturate the cotton ball pretty good to the point, and you might wanna wear gloves doing this so the alcohol doesn't dry your fingertips out. That's your choice. But then I'm gonna take the cotton ball and kind of smoosh it up into the groove there so that it releases some of the alcohol down into the groove. And what this is going to do is soften up the silicone caulking that's around here and allow you to remove the sink easier. So I'm going to make sure I go all the way around getting this on all of the silicone caulking. may make things a little bit easier if you come from the cabinet side and cut around the inside of this as well. I didn't do that on the last sink, um, so it's possible to do it without doing that, but it may make it a little bit easier, so just a heads up there. But now that I've got this soaked in alcohol, I'm gonna go do something else for a while, give this a chance for the alcohol to permeate into the silicone, softening it. I'll come back a couple more times and put a little more alcohol down there because this stuff does evaporate. You can probably see it's evaporating already. So you're going to need to do, do this a few times, but I'm going to wait about 10 minutes, come back, do this again, probably do that at least three times, and then we'll work on getting the sink out of the opening. Round two with the alcohol. This will be my third go around with the alcohol. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do before I try to take the sink out is disconnect 
my supply line and my drain line. So the drain line is actually pretty simple. I just put something underneath to catch the water and then loosen your connections here. And everything will just separate. Just be aware this water is likely to not smell very great. I would immediately wipe up any water that falls onto your cabinetry, as I've just done. So to disconnect your supply lines here, you're just gonna take a wrench and turn it counterclockwise, turn the nut counterclockwise, go ahead and spin that up, and then disconnect it. Again, making sure you have something ready to collect any water that's gonna come out. And the other thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and open your faucet at this point to allow the water to come down. So I'm gonna open that right now and we'll see what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and open the other side as well. And again, immediately wipe up any water that makes contact with the uh, cabinetry. This cabinetry is typically particle board, and if you get it wet, it will swell and get all messed up. So make sure you clean all that up right away. So now from here, you're ready to go ahead and remove your sink. I'm gonna leave my drain and everything intact and just pull everything out as one unit. So here's where things get a little bit tricky. And if you know a better way of doing this, drop that down in the comments. I'm just showing you what worked for me when I did it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a rag. I'm gonna put that here on my granite to make sure I'm not scratching my granite up. And I'm gonna take a smaller screwdriver and just start to Pry up on my sink here. And be careful, you may want to wear eye protection as well because if this chips and flings up, it's going to come right at your eye. So what I did with the other sink was I just kind of went around the edge and worked this a little bit until it started to come loose. You also you also don't want to pry really hard because you might end up breaking your granite if you pry too hard. But I don't know if you can tell in the video. Each time I push up on this, it kind of flexes just a little bit away from the surface. So I'm just going to keep doing that kind of like a loose tooth. And like I'm not going to apply a lot of brute force all at once. I'm just going to pulsate with it. And as you can see, it has just come loose. So putting that alcohol around there really does help soften everything up and get it ready for removal. From here, I'm just gonna have you go ahead and close these again and just pull this thing right out. Actually, I don't think it's quite separated all the way. There we go. Now it is. And you can see this has gotten kind of gooey. That's exactly what you wanted because you wanted it to release. So now you might want a friend here, but I'm okay grabbing it myself, but just pick it up and remove it from the opening. So what I'm gonna work on now is just cleaning up some of this caulk from around the edge. I'm just gonna take a razor blade and carefully go around. Again, trying to make sure I don't scratch up my granite. 
So I'm gonna be very careful, very easy on this. Theoretically, it doesn't matter if I scratch right around this edge, given the fact that the new sink is going to cover that, but I would rather just not mess the granite all up if I don't have to. So again, being very careful. I'm also trying not to drop it down in the hole because that's just a mess that I have to clean up down in the cabinet. So I'm kind of trying to work my way outward. So now I've got most of the caulking removed, I'm gonna go ahead and just take a bit of alcohol on a paper towel here. I just kind of clean everything up a bit. All of this again is gonna be covered by the new sink. So it's not a big deal, but I just wanna have a clean area to work with here. Okay, so out in the garage, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare my sink to be placed down into the opening. I'm gonna go ahead and install my faucet first. This is pretty straightforward. So this is what you're gonna to use to mount your faucet to the sink. Notice there are two rubber pads and two metal contact surfaces. So this rubber pad, you wanna remain on that part. This rubber pad, you wanna take off because that's gonna go on the bottom of the sink. You're just gonna fish your supply lines through your hole. Make sure that rubber pad is sitting where it's supposed to be, down in that little groove. And then take the uh, two pieces right here, rubber side down, or rubber side towards the porcelain, I should say. Make sure that slides on properly. Slide your washer on. And thread these back down. Take a glance back over at your other side. Make sure your gasket is seated over there. And then go ahead and continue to thread these down. I'm just gonna snug it slightly by hand. And then I'm gonna pick it up here that way I can kind of take a sight down over the drain and make sure that this is facing the proper direction. Make sure it's facing right over the drain. Now I'm just eyeballing this. There may be a more scientific method. What you could maybe do is put a square right here and square that to the back side. That's probably not a bad way to do it. I think I'm gonna do that real quick actually. And what I'm gonna do is since I know I've got this mostly little lined up is I'm just gonna tighten these by hand just a little. Just snug it up. I'm gonna use a square here. Now this works for this faucet. May not work for your faucet. Do whatever you need to do to get it lined up properly, obviously. But this is a pretty good gauge for me in this situation. You also wanna make sure you have it centered in the hole because it can walk a little bit side to side within the opening. Again, if there's a more scientific way to do this and I'm just not aware, drop that down in the comments. Help your fellow DIYer out. But once you think you have it centered up, then what you're gonna go ahead and do is just snug these nuts down here. And you can actually probably use the alignment of this to make sure it's centered in the hole. But what I found anyways is a lot of these sinks aren't perfectly made anyways. The ones I took out weren't for sure. So it may be difficult to use measurements to get it exactly centered. 
but do your best. You don't want it to look all funky and off-center when you install your new sink. These don't need to be real tight. In fact, if you over-tighten them, you could possibly crack the porcelain. So I would just get them good and snug, but not without over-tightening them. And you see how I'm going back and forth? Tightening one side a little, tightening the other side a little. But once it's snug to where it's not gonna move in the opening, that's pretty much what you want. And before you take it to the sink, also check it one more time for alignment. And once you're happy with what, the way everything looks, the way it's aligned, satisfied that everything is straight, you're gonna go ahead and install your drain. And that's what I'm gonna do now. So the first thing you need to do is make sure this is clean. The next thing is go ahead and grab some 100% silicone caulk. You can use white or clear, whatever you prefer. I like the white since this is a white sink. I'm gonna put some silicone right around the center edge here to make sure that I get a nice waterproof seal. I don't know if this is necessary or not, but that's what I like to do just to be on the safe side. Then you're gonna take your drain and these gaskets are oriented in the way in which they're supposed to go on the sink. One goes on the top, one goes on the bottom of the sink. So here we go. I think I'm actually gonna run just a little bit of silicone right around this edge as well. Again, just to be on the safe side. Not a lot, just a little. There we go. Slide my gasket back into position. this through the hole in my sink. Try not to get too much on the threads. Although I think I just got a good bit on there. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe that off the threads real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and slide my, slide my other gasket back on. And go ahead and install my lock nut. Now, just because I have OCD, I did notice there's a bit of a grain pattern to this drain. And I can see it's kind of oriented in this direction right now. I want it to go this direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and give my drain a twist until I like the direction of my grain. Then I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down my lock nut. And you want this to be good and firm, but not Hulk torque. And your the grain on your drain may twist a little again when you're tightening your lock nut. So make sure you take another glance at that and rotate that if necessary. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this portion of the drain. There is a gasket on that, so make sure your gasket is present. Now we're ready to take this inside and put it into place. Okay, now once again, a helper might be nice in this situation, but I can handle it on my own, so I'm just going to drop this right in. Very carefully. It looks like I have a little more cleaning up to do right here because you can see the old caulking there. So I'm going to give that a bit of a cleanup. And then I'm going to center this thing. Okay, so that's probably good enough. Now to center this, what I did with the other side, and I'm going to do the same thing here, is I've got the little decorative feature on the front of my cabinets. And I'm just going to, this is going to require a little bit of eyeballing, but what I'm going to do is 
put a piece of painter's tape as vertically as I can between that, those two pieces here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little more scientific with it. I'm gonna take my tape measure and I'm gonna measure from one side of the sink to the edge of the tape, and I have 11 and a half inches here. Your results may vary, but that's what I've got, 11 and a half. And on this side, I've got just under 11 and a quarter. So this thing needs to slide this way a little bit. So instead of just sliding it though, I don't wanna risk scratching my granite on this side and then having it be visible. I'm gonna to try to lift it a little bit and just kind of move it. So I've moved it ever so slightly. Just check that measurement again. Now I have 11 and a half on that side. 11 and a quarter on this side, so that means I moved it too far. I need it to go just a hair. So now we've got about 11 and a quarter there. About 11 and a quarter there. So that's gonna be good. The next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and connect my plumbing underneath. Okay, for those of you who are observant, what you may notice first is that my supply lines aren't long enough and that my drain also is not gonna come down as far as the last drain. That's because we moved everything up. We're gonna need some extension pieces in order to do that. So what I did is I went to the Home Depot and I got this 12 inch extension tube. You could probably get it on Amazon, so I'll put the link in the description for that. And also I bought these from Home Depot. Again, Amazon probably has them. I needed about six inches more when I measured it on the other side. These are 12 inches, so I'm gonna have to loop them around. But I'll put a link on Amazon to Amazon where you can purchase these ahead of time and get maybe a shorter one, like six or eight inches or something like that. But what we're gonna do is go ahead and connect the lines to the other lines. So that obviously this line is an extension. It's gonna be three eighths on both sides and one side will be a male, one side will be a female. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hand tighten these for the moment. Then I'll come back on my wrench and tighten them down. And again, these don't have to be super tight. Just nice and snug. There we go. Now these do have, like the cold water side has a blue tag on it. The hot water side has red. Where I live, the cold would be on the right the hot would be on the left. So again, what I'm gonna have to do here is just kind of loop this around. Just give it a bit of a loop there. It's wanting to travel up on me, but that's fine. It doesn't really matter where the loop is, as long as it's looped up and out of the way. But I, don't, I do want to be conscious as to which direction it loops. So both loops look the same and are kind of up there by each other. Again, that's just my OCD coming out. That's not necessary. That's just how I'm doing it. But as you can see, these are way too long, but no problem, they will work. So again, tighten these down. Once again, snug, but not over tight. There we go. Now we're going to connect the drain side. I want to make sure you pick the right size gasket. There are two different sizes here, depending on the diameter of what you have here. So um, obviously, like we're going to put this one on and it's too big, as you can probably see in the video there. So that one's not gonna work. It's gonna be the smaller size. So pick the appropriate um, adapter here, gasket, put that in place. Just kind of pop that in and start the threads. Once you have your thread started, you can just kind of stick it onto the drain like that. And then bring it down a little bit as necessary to get it seated in that gasket and you'll feel it pop into place. And then just tighten everything down once you have it where you want it. 
Again, you want these to be good and snug by hand, but don't over tighten them because you can break the fittings and everything. You don't want that. Especially this fitting here and this one here where it's a hard connection. These two, it's just gonna mush down the gasket, essentially, when you tighten it. So you can maybe deform the gasket and whatnot if you tighten it a little too much, but those aren't as imperative. Again, just get them good and tight by hand. Same thing here, and I'm just gonna check this one. All right, so that's it for underneath the sink. Let's go back up on top and uh, get this thing caulked up. That'll be our last step. Okay, so the final part of the job, which is also my least favorite part of the job, is to do the caulking around the edge to hold the sink into position. For that, again, I'm gonna use 100% silicone. Uh, the stuff is a little pricey, $15 a tube, but it's guaranteed for life that it will not crack, shrink, and all that. So I like the idea that I wanna put this stuff down once, not have to mess with it again. So that's what I'm gonna roll with. Uh, just a heads up here, I am not a great resource and person for doing caulking, so I'm gonna do my best here. When I did the other side, it came out looking okay. If you know any really good tips for caulking, drop those down in the comments. But I think with this side, I'm gonna try a trick that I've seen before, but not actually done before. And that is to kind of put a bit of painter's tape right along the edge of where you want your caulk to not go. So I don't wanna get caulking all over the bottom part here, right? So I'm gonna try this technique. What I've done is I just kind of barely put it outside of where I want it to go. And, it, and you're gonna probably also see in the video that this isn't exactly straight, the edge of this sink. So I've tried to put it right near the bottom edge, but not hanging out too far. And that gap actually widens over here. I may, may move this over just slightly, but you kind of get the idea. You want to put this where you don't want to get the caulk and have it where you do want to have the caulk and then come back and smooth it with your finger. So I'm going to give that a shot and see how well this works out. Again, I want to move this ever so slightly outward, I think. Yeah, there we go. That's better. All I did was move this edge a little further out. So now I'm just going to lay some caulk down. Now you want to use this somewhat sparingly because the more you have to push this with your finger, the messier it's going to get. So you want to get the angle just right. Don't push too much caulking down in there. You want to make sure you have a rag on standby for this. And kind of the trick, my understanding of it, is you want to kind of push this along, but without pushing it too much and without spreading too much caulking around. Because once you start doing that, you just have a big mess. So I'm going to take my finger and let me see if I can get a better camera angle. Okay, that may be a little better. So I'm just going to take my finger here and just barely kind of make contact with the caulking. And once you get a little bit on your finger, wipe it off. You want this to stay nice and clean. One of the biggest keys of this is keeping the finger nice and clean. So don't start with too much caulk and keep wiping your finger off. Now if you're seeing that, how it's kind of not really making contact, go ahead and give it a little bit more of a smush. And if it's doing that even more here, that means I don't have enough caulk. I'm gonna try to use what I've got on my finger there to kind of fill that in. So I had just quite not enough there, but I was able to work with it. And now what I'm gonna do is try to pay attention to how much this caulk is overhanging onto the painter's tape, because I don't want there to be a ridge when I pull the tape up. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this another pass, 
See if I can clean some of that up. Okay, I think I'm somewhat satisfied with what that's gonna look like. Let's peel this tape and see what we have. I'm gonna peel that tape coming this direction. And I think that actually doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna go ahead and run with that. And then I'm gonna do that all the way around the sink. Yeah, that looks pretty good. This area right here can maybe use a little bit more caulk. So I may try to work that just a little more with my finger, but I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other two sides now. Now, I don't know if you noticed this, but this sink is very not straight in the front. Because if I try to put this down straight, it's way bigger of a gap on the sides than it is along the front. So what I'm gonna try to do in this instance is just try to make a uniform distance away from the front of the sink. And kind of put this down. Obviously that's gonna curve around the sink a bit, but I think you see what I mean though. Just try to make a uniform gap all the way around the sink. Had to manipulate the tape a little bit, but I think you get the idea. And pay attention a little bit to that corner right there. Oh, I pulled it out, snow. I'm just trying to smooth that over so it's nice and smooth right there on the corner. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my tape. Looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna do that final side. Okay, so I've got the other side to do, but I don't think I'm gonna really be able to get a good camera angle back here, so I'll just omit doing that. I showed you what I did on the first two sides. As you see, I came out pretty good. I think I got a little bit of an air bubble there, and I gotta clean up that corner a bit, but I'll do that as I do this other side. But overall, that caulking technique worked pretty good, I think. Came out looking not bad. Again, I could probably clean this up a little bit more and have it look better, but that looks pretty good. Not a lot of cleanups, so really from here, make sure you check, check your plumbing, run this for a bit. I do have a little umbrella insert I have to put there, just like what we've got here. But otherwise, I'm done. Just make sure you, again, don't have any leaks. Monitor that for you know a couple of hours or a day or two. Just kind of stick your hand back here. Make sure you don't have any water on your hand as you touch that, and then down here as well. Um, you may need to snug these up a little bit, but you should be okay. Uh, again, just keep an eye on it, but that's basically it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video helps you in installing your sink and faucets. I know the faucets you can buy on Amazon. I'll put a link for those. The sinks, I bought at Home Depot, so you know what I got. But, um, yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. Make sure you check out the rest of my channel. Hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you very much, YouTube. Everyone, if you enjoyed today's video, I would invite you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below right there on the right hand corner. And if you felt that the products in today's video is something you might like to own yourself, there's a product link right up there to the right, upper right hand corner, or down in the description will be a product link for you to purchase the product as well. Thank you very much for watching YouTube.